15 years old, I asked, uh, I asked God that, that, that he would allow me to, to, to be good at football and, and be in football the rest of my life and that I would do anything or do it the right way to do it the way I, I, I've been called to do it. Since that moment, you know, I've been able to play high school and went to Potomac State and thrived and had a great time and was recruited by Russ to become a Fairmont. Went to West Virginia, was a GA under Rich to get you know, a couple master's degrees, work on some doctor work, which, no, it's very difficult. But, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, I'm, I'm truly blessed to be doing what I what I love to do, and that's leading young people. And, and what's right and what's wrong is what bases you know bases our program philosophy and you know, pride, purpose, and passion in developing young people. Doesn't matter where they're from, guys. Doesn't matter what their academic background is. When we inherit them, we bring them in. We make them part of our family. We've got to do everything we possibly can to allow them to get that degree. That's first and foremost. And you look at some of the, some of the success that we've had off the field since I've been there. Much respect to Rusty for, for showing me the ropes and getting me into this business. I mean, he, he's a big part of, of our philosophy, and it, and it helps to have the philosophy of, of shared philosophy of your athletic director, your head football coach, your head basketball coach. Uh, understanding that we have a, to have a common background and having that belief and faith is critical to, you know, to, to moving forward. But, the success that we've experienced, you know, is just it's phenomenal. I mean, he mentions having the highest graduation rate in West Virginia Conference year after year after year. Now it's just, it's old news now. It's like, well, Fairmont State has the highest graduation rate again. You know, what's next? You know, having football-wise, we've had two, we had two first-team academic All-Americans last year. Phenomenal. Only team in the country. Think about that. Two first-team academic All-Americans on the same team. They do have McDonald and Frank Keenan. Team GPA of 2.98. Team GPA of 2.98, incredible. Freshman GPA of 2.85, we gotta get them up. Our goal's 3.0 for both groups. And we, we had, my first three years, our freshman GPA was over 3.0. And the last two years, we've kind of dipped below, I think two years ago, we were about 2.78 or 2.79. And it's very critical to get our freshman group started off on solid ground. And the elbow grease that we put into that academic program is critical because we're not there to win at all costs. Never, never, yeah, it's, it's not number one for us. And uh, it's difficult sometimes for coaches to say that, you know, let alone do it. I mean, a lot of coaches can say, we're, we're focused on academics, we're focused on, we are, look at our numbers, every year, every year. It's just incredible, and I'm so proud to, to report that. Secondarily, I should say primarily, and a lot of times through the recruiting process, you, you know, you shock parents when you say, well, <coughs> academics isn't number one for us. You know, what are you talking about? That's what we heard from Tiffin. That's what we heard from Glenville. It's all about academics. No, developing into a man, becoming a better person is number one. Because if we can build you as a man, you're going to go to class. I mean, it's not going to be a question of whether or not you're, you know, have high, high class attendance or meeting with your tutor, whatever it would be. So that focus on the individual is critical for us. Are we perfect again? Once again, absolutely. Last year we were in a community as, an, as a group 18 times. We had an 11-week season. For 10 out of 11 weeks, our team in some way, shape, or form was out in this community giving, which is critical. Now, they don't like it during the process or once we you know, ask for volunteers. Or we also have a unity council of 13 guys that does a lot of this as well. But we, like, we require each kid to have at least three community service acts, acts per year, and they usually crush those numbers. You know, once we get them in the vans and we get them over to, to East Park or we get them to ringing bells or whatever the function may be, you, you can't believe, you can see it in their face when they get on that phone and they're texting mom or they're texting their aunt or they're texting their guardian or grandparents, hey, guess what I just did? You know, I just played basketball with the youth group after school program. Now that's what it's about. We don't, as coaches, we don't have to say anything. They're not happy to get in the van, but they can't even explain the feeling they have when they get out of the van because that's the greatest feeling in the world you get is when you give, when, you, when you're unselfish and you're able to, to take your blessing as a college football student athlete and these kids look up to us. We understand and we acknowledge that. Let's go give them our time and our efforts and our energy so that maybe we make a difference. And every time you go out, we tell them, every time you're out in the community, one kid, whether it's a girl or a boy or, or an elderly at Shop and Save or Ringing Bells or whatever, you're going to make a difference in at least one person's life that day. That's guaranteed, just one. That's our goal, to have someone report that you made a difference in a kid's life or, or whatever the situation may be. So I'm so proud of that. So what else is there? Football? Football's football. I, I'm not a football coach. I'm a leader of young men, and that will never change. And again, are we perfect? Nope. I can't, I can't state that enough. I know I'm beating that up, but 
You know, we go through ups and downs as an athletic department, as a football program. But just the way I was raised in, in the Northview section of Clarksburg, in a political, hardworking business family, um, we're going to take our ups and downs. If we hold hands and stay together, then we're going to just be fine. If you're doing what's right and you're doing it the right way, you stick by your values, you stick by what got you to that point, you're just going to be fine. That's just the way I was raised. And pray <laughs> regularly, sometimes multiple times per day. As a football organization last year, um, you know, we, we always have to practice patience in this thing called team sports because the ball, particularly our sport, it's all long. You don't know where it's going. You don't know where it's going to bounce. And those guys that wear the zebra suits, you don't know what they're thinking that day or how far they had to travel. Those are factors we can't control. <coughs> but but the, for what we, we've been able to control, you know, progressively as a program on the football field, we've gotten better as well. Last year we were seven and four. Many of you know we were an undefeated non-conference. We had, again, three first-team all-conference players. Luke Black's now with the Cincinnati Bengals. We play on Thursday night, and, you know, that's great. But he's also a great person, a great student, graduated in the engineering program. Um, we had seven 30 point plus 30 points or more games, which tied the school record. So offensively, we were, we were, that's what we've been in years. We had another freshman of the year, rookie of the year. You know, it was Logan Moore two years ago, Danny Monroe last year. Uh, Daniels, again, he's one of those 3.9 students that's in, in multi double major. Um, and defensively, we were top seven in rush defense. We always like to stop the run. We want to run the football and stop the run on defense. That's our philosophy on in terms of football. But, I mean, kicking game, we were the best in the conference, had that one special team. So, I mean, we were as good as, as we could be. Now, there was a game early in the year at Glenville that, that, did, that didn't bounce our way. And that's, that's, the, that's the toughest part of a coach or a leader. It's easy to leave when things are, you know, going well. When something's taken from you, when you have adversity, that's where you build on your strength. That's where your core and your backbone comes in. That's when you have to be a thumb pointer and say, we can fix this together. How do we get through this? That's adversity. That's the most difficult part of life. It's easy to, to do well when things are going well and hoot and holler when you're winning and all that. And uh, that's why it's very important to just, just stay level-headed you know, and try to get through try to get through both situations level-headed as you can. Um, and then we, we got injured against Bowie State, which was our 11th game, which kind of explains why we don't have an 11th game this year. Um, we lost our starting quarterback last year in that extra game, that 11th game. Well, he was never the same the rest of the season and uh, suffered a concussion, which was his, which, you know, affected his ability to, to think, which in turn affected his ability to, to play football, you know, to throw the football. And being a quarterback is pretty important. We go to Wesleyan, get beat 21-14 uh, by a team that was 14th in the country, you know, and that makes us a 9-2 ball club. You know, the Glenville game, the, I don't know if you all were there and saw what I saw. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a lot of crying in the locker room, and that's a game that, you know, I know there's no Glenville people who are going to report back, but that's a game our kids have served week two at Glenville because they know that, that it wasn't, that they, yeah, uh, enough said on that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, so seven and four, you know, technically, but, but we were thinking we could have been a nine two ball club. Now, how do you take that into this year? You can't transfer wins. You can't bring in that stuff. You just got to progress, progress, progress. And the offense, the defense, the special teams, schematically, you we're solid as we need to be. Fundamentally, I've got a great coach. We've got a great staff, and we're in good shape from that from that situation. Um, back to that 11th game thing that I, that I mentioned. We got hurt in that 11th game last year, enough that, that made me say, do we really need 11 games? Now, it also happened that this, everyone, I think I'm getting some of the heat, and Coach Elliott is as well. Why do you only have four games at home? Why do you only have four games at home? Well, I understand that question. West Virginia Tech is a team that dropped football. They were our, they owed us a return game. Once they decided to drop, which was late according to scheduling, you know, it's very difficult. Yeah, we could have brought in, uh, you know, someone that it, it, it just didn't make sense. So that, that's part of the reason. That was our that was our fifth home game, and to have 11 games. Uh, you know, it didn't excite me based upon uh, that uh, experience we had last year. So, uh, you know, but, but the good news is we've got five games, and we've got an off week, and we've got five games. And then, you know, again, past experience, you know, demonstrates that we, we could use the off week. So we're excited. You know, we, we should be we should be in there. We're, we're hopeful. But, again, it's not something that we bank on. We're working hard. We've got great kids. So we've already been on the community three times this fall. And that's, that's what it's all about for me. And, uh, Hopefully I never change.